Hi my friends, how are you? I hope everybody is fine. My name is Daniel Villarino. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In the first place, I want to say thank you to Juval Ahab from Italy who sent me this beautiful sticker from his workshop and also to Mike Walt from the United Kingdom who sent me two in, instead of one. So I got uh, extra, extra sticker and you will see them stick to my door with the other ones over there probably by the end of this video or at the beginning of the next video. So thank you Joval, thank you Mike and to everybody else if you want to send your stickers so that I can stick it on the door you are more than welcome and of course I will send you one in exchange. Okay, in the past video I did this glue block it's a threaded glue block, glue block that has the particular, uh, I guess, characteristic that I did it using a hand drill and then I passed the tap only with the help of a French wrench. Even though that wasn't really precise, after I had the thread I mounted in the lathe, I threw up all the surfaces and I got a glue block that in my belief is I guess 99% precise okay now with the help of this one which I am going to put in the lathe and I will throw up this gluing surface first I'm going to make a smaller one out of this piece of wood and this one is going to be much more precise because is going to be mounted on the lathe so the perforation is going to be done with the lathe and the threading is going to be done with the help of the lathe and at the end I am going to have a smaller glue block which is not bad because this one is kind of a big size but sometimes we need something that will attach to a base that is going to be smaller or to a smaller piece so I'm going to mount this piece between centers I'm going to throw it up in all uh, places. I will slightly dish in one of the faces so I will have nice contact with this glue block and when it is, once it is there attached with CA glue I'm going to do all the process of uh, perforation and threading. So that's to this project. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to work. When I am at the lathe I use a protection system that flows filter air inside the mask enclosure. This generates a positive air pressure inside that enclosure that blocks dust from entering there. The mask itself is a full face protection against any projectile that may be shoot away from the light and it has a couple of earmuffs that act as protection against the shop noises. I put a small maple blank between centers and I threw it up using the skew chisel. I turn on the air circulator that has filters to trap the dust found in suspension in the shop environment. Initiate the face through up with a parting tool, I use it like a scraper, directly attacking the wood. But once the cut started, I raise the tool to transition from scraping to cutting. This way the rim of the cut is clean and it does not look torn. It is always convenient to blunt a bit the rim. The sharp edges that are formed there sometimes can be dangerous. 
I verified that the face has a slight concavity and I repeat the process in the other face. I mount the threaded glue block on the spindle. That's the one I did on the previous video. And I give it a slight pass to ensure that it rotates without vibration and without cobbling. Using the life center as a guide, I place the maple plank against the glue block and with a pencil I mark a circumference that will guide me in the glue up. Put a bit of thick CA glue in the border of the face I want to glue up. I spray accelerator on the face of the glue block and carefully I place the maple cylinder center in the circumference. The thick CA glue takes longer to cure, giving me more time to place the maple cylinder as centered as possible on the glue block. I put the lathe to rotate very slow so that the CA glue will not scatter and I apply a little bit more of accelerator to the glue joint. With a pencil I paint the cylindrical face of the blank and then I drew it up with a gouge. The pencil marks will help me as a reference to ensure that the block is once again cylindrical. In this take, the arrows show how the gouge bevel rubs against the wood surface, making the cut smoother and more stable. And when I say rubbing the bevel, it is more like a gentle touch. I am not forcing the bevel against the wood. When making perforations with big Forstner bits, it is always convenient to slow down the speed, otherwise the wood will burn and the bit will get planted. 450 RPMs are more than enough in this case. At the beginning, I start very slow, looking how a circle begins to form when the cut is starting. See the red arrow. And only after having a depth of a quarter of an inch or more, I proceed a little faster. This way, the bead will not have a lateral movement and the cut will be centered in the lathe rotation axis. The first cut was of a diameter of 1 inch and 1 eighth for the particular case of my lathe which has a spindle with a 1 inch and 1 quarter diameter. I used then a bit of 1 inch and 5 eighths to make a recess that will allow the block better contact against the shoulder of the spindle. I make sure that the late spindle is fixed in place. The tap has in the back a small dimple that will help the conic life center to maintain the correct position of the tap all along the process of threading. I approach the tap to the blank perforation very carefully so that the first teeth will grab correctly and the tap will be aligned. I am going to help myself with a French wrench to rotate the tap. The process is that as the teeth of the tap are creating the threads, 
I will keep adjusting with the tailstock wheel so that I keep the tap in the correct orientation. This is more critical at the beginning of the process. To break the shavings and avoid the tap from jamming, every so often I will rotate in the counterclockwise direction and for that I will have to release the pressure with the wheel in the test. In this take, you can see better that I rotate the tap and then I keep approaching the conic life center, as shown by my finger. And also that for breaking the shavings and keeping the tap from jamming, I release the pressure with the live center first to make a space for the tap. It almost reaches the bottom of the perforation that I made. The thread of my lathe spindle has one inch and one quarter and eight threads per inch. With the gauge I am going to chamfer the inside and also give the thread beginning a slightly conical shape. 
This will facilitate the placement of the glue block in the spindle and also protect the first thread from crumbling. To separate the new glue block from the old one, I touch the old one with the profile of a straight chisel and I give it a few taps. Eventually it will separate. I put a towel over the bed to cushion the impact. I fit the new block in the lathe spindle to finish the face that was attached to the old glue block. I pass the tap from side to side, helping myself with a French wrench at the end to ensure that the thread is fully formed all along the length of the glue block. I try it from one side and from the other, and I verify that it will enter without problems in the lathe spindle. Ok my friends, I finished making this small glue block, small in diameter, actually is uh, pretty long, which is nice because it will allow me to use it for many projects and every time that you make a project and you glue something to the glue block like in this particular case that I use this one to make this other one uh, some of the uh, material of the CA glue remains there so that will mean that you will have to remove a little bit of the surface uh, to uh, replenish it and, and leave it nice for the next uh, glue up and that will probably remove maybe one thirty second of an, of an inch, uh, one sixteen of an inch. That's probably the, the more that you will remove every time. So each of these actually will uh, last you for, for some time because it will allow you to do multiple projects. It's convenient to have them in multiple sizes and this one is in maple. It was just a small piece that I had uh, you know, uh, cut out from another project and uh, one thing that uh, some turners do is to put some paste wax in, in the threads to protect them a little bit and also to lubricate them and also some turners use CA glue to strengthen the threads because in the case of my lathe is a big pass, is 8 TPIs and they are big threads. Uh, I, I don't think it's, it's necessary, particularly with a hardwood like the maple. But for smaller threads, maybe it, it may be a good idea to put some CA glue and then re-thread it. Also, there is a video by Jim Overton. I will put it there in the description that shows how to do them uh, using milliput, which is actually really cool. Um, okay, you can see there. Uh, the stickers from Mike and um, from Joual that I already placed them there. Thank you my friends again for sending them and now if you allow me I would like to show you some pictures that have been sent by the subscribers. Gerardo from Santa Rosa, province of La Pampa, Argentina made this pen and this beautiful bowl in Calden wood. Very good job Gerardo. Claudio, from Bahía Blanca, province of Buenos Aires, Argentina, made this mortar in paraíso wood and the pestle in pink eucalyptus. Excellent, Claudio. And here you can see some details of the maple glue block. Very 
nice pictures. Uh, thank you for sending them. Um, I really enjoy them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, please mark the like button down below, make comments, and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. And it will be until the next one. Cheers.